Well, John Holland's always been a strong supporter. Uh, as I said, we're the, Australia's largest contractor. We benefit a lot from the amount of growth and work in Australia. We feel an obligation to contribute to that and to be part of making sure the industry is successful. So we contribute through the, the premier event, which is this one, um, and it's a good, good showcase. It's also a good way for us to learn and interact with, with the industry. Uh, probably many, but one of my favourite ones is um, what we call ETW, which is a track work authority we're using in country New South Wales. So we've moved across from a, uh, a verbal approval process uh, by telephones through to a digital system on phones, which is now you know, faster, safer, quicker, um, and, and really a better solution and safer for the guys there. So that digitally um, approves the location of staff and their protection and is a safer, better process. There's probably two areas here. One is um, how we make, uh, promote the industry or communicate how exciting careers are in the industry, which they truly are. So a lot of that's just getting that information into the schools, into homes, into universities. And we're working quite heavily in that space to help with that. And uh, I know the ARA is as well, how we work our way through. Um, and in trade areas, how we promote. And also areas which we traditionally wouldn't think that way, but now we're working through with uh, communities and helping them find that work. I think the other area too is actually uh, putting our money where our mouth is and saying, look, how do we um, invest in things? So uh, for myself, the, the projects we're doing, we're probably employing over a thousand people in rail projects uh, this year. Uh, and with this growth, uh, I, we've employed over 100 graduate engineers. Uh, we're working with undergraduates, bringing them on. So really trying to um, create those jobs and put those back through. I think the third area too is um, the, the pool of people available. We're trying to make it more diverse. So how do we make the industry and our own organisations more attractive to different areas? Um, you know, it springs to mind how do we make it more friendly for females working in the industry, which traditionally hasn't been like that. So more flexible uh, employment patterns, how do we support them in that area? Are we working with Indigenous um, employees and how do we be sensitive to those when we get through? And um, that's paying off in terms of the skills and the extra, extra um, diversity of approach we're getting through that. So um, you know, our objective is to grow a more diverse workforce and a larger workforce to support this strong industry. Uh, quite an exciting place, uh, certainly in the mobility, so um, I think that old challenge of you know, how people move around, I see far more people moving on public transport than um, private cars, and the whole, whole mode of private car I think is seeing a shift. Um, I see um, a blurring of lines between bus, rail, light rail, so it'll be more planned mobility, planned journeys, and the infrastructure and processes to help support those, so I'm um, working through. Uh, in the freight area, certainly more efficient um, and faster systems to actually uh, support Australia and support growth in that area. So really quite an exciting time. I think for too long the rail industry has been a bit slow to some of those changes. We're now starting to see rapid growth and space in that and um, like I said that continue to accelerate over the next 20 years.